Yeah. Um, when I first graduated college, I found myself at a Greek nightclub in Astoria, Queens, where there was a really big Greek community and a very happening music scene with a number of these small cafes uh, and then bigger places which were much more glitzy where they would throw plates and you know it was very intense um, so this was one of the smaller places and I became obsessed with Greek fiddle music and trying to reproduce that uh, really unique sound you know very much like klezmer right it has its own sound it involves ornaments that you gotta dope out and figure out somehow and it's really hard to learn to play with a native accent so that you can fool people into thinking you were greek which was my goal <laughs> i was determined to to pull that one off and i i loved the music so much and for a long time i played in this band this incredible greek band and uh, learned Greek island music and popular music. And I was very impressed with what a living culture that was and how like multi-generational family group groups would come and stay up till four in the morning dancing. And it was like, wow, and, uh, you know, they're, they've really got it going on um, with their music. And I really wanted that for Klezmer, which at the time in the eighties was still kind of you know, being revived. And I feel like we we kind of ended up doing that. And, you know, we, we had some success. So, but I was inspired by, by Greeks. In 1983, I took a, a year and a half off from college. And I spent a year hitchhiking around Europe. And I went to Israel also, um, playing on the streets. And this was before they coined the term world music. And it was just like this weird interest of my own. Um, and actually I had been ma majoring in neuroscience before that. And the plan was to be a scientist. Um, so I found that I met musicians from a lot of places that were playing tr their traditional music. I, so I played with Berbers and Paris and um, I met these, uh, Italian, you know, it was a lot like the Klezmer revival. There was an Italian folk music revival going on in the 1980s in Italy. And um, I spent time with those musicians in Rome and a number of other kinds of music. And I hitchhiked and I played in the street. Um, and then when I returned to college, I changed my major to ethnomusicology. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I've been poor ever since. <laughs> but happy. The big thing was like you land in a city and you look for the record store mm -hmm. because there you could find music. There was nowhere else to find music. There was no internet. Mm -hmm. You would have to like go to a place <laughs> and find music. You know, it was all this exciting treasure hunt. So now it's so easy. There's access to everything everything your heart could desire and it would have been a dream come true at that time if, if we could we're going to plop you for a week in 2021 and you go to town with that internet we would have been like woo! but i feel like maybe it's all a little abstract and like up here mm -hmm. you know, maybe for young people today because you know it's all it's a solitary it can be a solitary experience to get all the stuff from the internet. It's such a different environment musically, like the internet's so huge and oh. I mean, your, your career is so much in a way of the time, right? That you were able to do yes. so much traveling and so many live performances. It was all about people, you know, yeah. and when you're young, I mean, at least when I was young, I all I wanted to do was meet more and more people and new people. I loved people. People were just the greatest. <laughs> 